Bulbudaka, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, we were just a little bit late today because we were trying to get uh, some last minute data from the laboratory. Anyway, uh, I want to start today by thanking our sign language interpreter, Lorraine Mbalin Rodroga, for helping us in our important announcements to everyone who needs to understand them. I've seen some comments online asking why isn't she wearing a mask during this announcement. Some of you may not know it, but facial expressions are an important part of the uh, sign language, as I explained yesterday. I need to be clearly understood in, uh, by the public. That's why I'm not wearing a mask. And the same also applies to, uh, to her, Minaka Lorraine. At the start of this uh, outbreak, our projected cap for COVID-19 testing was uh, 600 tests a day which was already more than the daily average. It's clear that uh, there was an underestimate of what our healthcare heroes can do. In a 24-hour marathon testing exercise, we have run up more than 1,000 COVID-19 tests. And this is, uh, for us, this is a single day record. And uh, we are in the process of acquiring a, uh, more gene expert machines to help uh, increase our capacity to test. We do have some good news to share. We found our last uh, minibus driver. He is currently quarantined at home and will be tested. Now we are just looking for the passengers of that minibus that travel from uh, the Lotoka minibus stand to Nandi at about 5.30 p.m. on Saturday, April 17th. The minibus is white. It has a red painted front bumper with a license number LM417. A photo of this minibus has been posted on the Fijian government uh, Facebook page and is released to the media. So if you rode in this minibus from uh, Lotoko to Nendi that night, please call 158. As of this afternoon, we have no new cases of COVID-19 to report at the border or in the community. That means we still have 19 active cases, four border quarantine cases, and five locally transmitted cases. The three Fijians living in, on Motoriki we suspected may have been exposed to the virus have all tested negative for COVID-19. We are going to maintain the island as a containment area until the 14-day incubation period expires because they were exposed. However, these test results do confirm that these three Fijians were not contagious while they traveled to Motoriki from Lotoka. So the village of Waidoka in uh, Telebu, where they stayed overnight, is no longer considered a screening zone. I want to also start uh, today's brief by thanking those who are wearing masks in the public and wearing them properly. The choice you made is the best way you can honor the hard work of the ministry to stop this virus from crippling, crippling Fiji and threatening the lives of our uh, people. But more Fijians must follow your example. Otherwise, our carelessness will cost us daily. Masks can be bought and they can be made. Homemade masks with at least two layers of cloth offer some protection from spreading and contracting this virus. We have guidance about uh, what your mask can and should look like on the Fiji government Facebook page and we will advertise that guidance over radio. So whether they are bought or made at home, there is no excuse for anyone in Fiji not to have a face covering every time they leave the house. If you are wearing a mask below your nose, it's no longer a mask, it's a mouth guard. The mask has to cover your nose and your mouth to keep you and those around you safe. Seriously, a mask worn below the nose is hardly different from them wearing no mask at all. 
We need to understand that this is not a box ticking exercise. You shouldn't only be wearing a mask because we ask you to wear one. You should wear a mask because you don't want the virus to come to you, neither do you want to pass your virus to anybody else. Most of us may feel young and invisible. Uh, most of you may feel young and, and invincible. You aren't. You or most or most certainly someone you love could contract the uh, COVID and end up in ICU. Where still, you could die. It's happened around the world. World. Listen well, act now, and don't let personal tragedy be your teacher. It's enough that we can see the tragedy unfolding in the world. The last thing we need is for, uh, for us to have the tragedy in our family and we say, man, I should have followed the advice. That's not good. I've seen images of crowded bus stands that have put well-founded fear in the hearts of many Fijians. These maskless crowds are hotspots waiting to happen. As we've seen, all it takes is one person at a funeral to ignite an outbreak. Just the same, it would take one maskless person on a bus or a minibus to turn that vehicle into a super spreader event on wheels. That goes for bus stands, supermarkets, and shops. That is why, from tomorrow, we requiring that mask wear, we requiring mask wearing in all public transportation. All bus drivers, minibus drivers, taxi drivers must wear mask, and they should not allow riders who don't wear mask to enter their vehicles. LTA officers will be monitoring all public transportations. Drivers who are not wearing masks won't be allowed to drive at all. Passengers who are not wearing masks will be removed from uh, public transport vehicles. And if the abuse is repeated, the LTA will stop some of those public transport vehicles altogether. Masks work best when everyone wears them. But they are not a substitute for physical distancing. As much as possible, we must keep the two meter space between us and others, even when we are wearing a mask. Buses and minibus should also ensure strict physical distancing among passengers. That will not be convenient, we know that. But it's necessary. If this virus takes hold of our community, no one will be driving anybody, anywhere. Drivers trans and transportation operators must make this sacrifice, or otherwise they will not be operating at all. For all other businesses, customers should not be allowed to enter premises unless they are masked. And the staff of those businesses should be leading by example by wearing masks and up wearing them properly. The same restrictions apply here. We will shut down businesses that are not enforcing mask wearing for customers and employees. And for all businesses and in all public transportation vehicles, all patrons must have the Care Fiji downloaded on their phone and must keep it switched on. If they don't have a phone, we want their contact uh, tracing details to be registered. Since yesterday, we've had about 20,000 more downloads of Care Fiji. We still need more. I understand there's about 600,000 smartphones in Fiji. Every one of them need to have the Care Fiji app loaded on it. The efficiency of our large scale contact tracing depends on it. As we head into the weekend, we will be limiting movement as much as possible. We know uh, Saturday is a big market day. Everyone who goes to the market must wear a mask and you are working with the municipal councils to manage markets as safely as possible. Anyone who needs uh, food, money or medicine can shop for it at the supermarket, open air markets, banks and pharmacies. Aside from these life-sustaining reasons, we need everyone to please stay home. Curfew hours will remain the same. 
However, the Fiji Police Force will be enforcing restricted movements across Viti Levu from tomorrow evening, Saturday, April 24th, at 1900 hours until Monday morning at 0400 hours, the 26th of April. We ask that you please spend this time at home, pray at home, eat at home, fast at home, celebrate with household members within your home this weekend. Stay home and save lives. If there is any message I'm asking features to help me share this weekend, it's just that. Stay home, save lives. If these protocols are ignored, or if our testing reveals additional cases, I will be forced to recommend a complete lockdown, in particular for Suva, Nosori, and the Labi Kordo. If we follow the rules, that won't need to happen. So I'm asking that we don't treat this virus lightly. Wear a mask, keep your distance, wash your hands often, and think very carefully before leaving your home. Or else, all of us will be at home all the time. Someone watching right now may have COVID. If they stay still, the virus stays still. If they move, the virus will move with them and spread to others. That is why we should stay within our homes and only interact with members of our household. The virus actually needs to go from one human being to another human being in order to stay alive and to survive. While you stay indoors surrounded by the comfort of uh, family, my teams will use this window to run the widest, far-reaching screening effort we have ever conducted. Super mobile screening uh, starts tomorrow with our, all the 50 households within the screening zone established at Cunningham Road. We've already screened more than 20,000 Fijians in the West. That effort will press ahead through the weekend. We've got 40 screening clinics open across the country to those who believe they may be experiencing COVID-like symptoms. There are cases out there, and we have to find them. If you feel unwell, please come forward. Be screened and be protected. When my teams are in the community, please be honest with them about how you're feeling, where you've been. They know what they're doing. They've been through this before. Trust them, support them, cooperate with them. If they're in your community, they are there because they care about keeping you safe. I can tell you, we would all prefer to be at home with our own families. Instead, we'll be defending yours. This is our duty, that is what we do every hour of every day to keep the virus from claiming additional Fijian lives. I want to make another important point. You notice I'm not wearing any gloves. Our, the, the ministry never asked Fijians to wear gloves during this pandemic for the simple reason that clean hands are far more hygienic. Gloves are a problem because everything you touch, it stays on them. And unlike your hands, they cannot be easily washed. Gloves are useful for cleaning surfaces, but they are not useful for stopping person-to-person -person transmission of COVID-19. Not in public, not in business, and not on a public transport. What we should be doing instead is washing our hands at every opportunity with soap and water. If you see a sink, wash your hand. If you see a sanitizer, use it. Following our swabbing from the funeral yesterday, we have over 350 negative test results from that funeral contact. We do have another 500 to be tested after that, and we're getting there. The numbers we get from these tests are critical to understanding the extent of the spread. We're watching these numbers closely to determine our positivity ratio, which is the ratio of positive tests against the tests uh, conducted, 
And this is the single most critical determinant of our next course of action. The moment these numbers tell us that we have a wider spread transmission, we will step up our health uh, restrictions. I know some people are hoping that we can lock down the entire country. We will if we have to. But we have to know how. And we need the data. And through our own experience, we can combat this virus in a targeted way. That is what we're doing. We'll do far better over the long term if Fijians adopt a common sense measure to defending themselves rather than us having to mandate for them to stay in their houses. I just digress a little bit and I just want to be very clear. I have seen the comments around lockdown everybody, lockdown Suva, lockdown this. Lockdown takes a lot of resources. Lockdown is not easy. When we lock down, we want to make sure that the lockdown will be effective in stopping the transmission and finding cases. That's what we lock down for. We don't just lock down for the purpose of locking down. I just need to be very clear about that. Defense is our best attack. This virus is an opportunist. It will take every opportunity that we give it. Whether that is a maskless conversation, a crowded market, or a careless decision to share taki, bilo, or cigarette. We can defend ourselves with mask. We can defend ourselves with good hand hygiene and with physical distance. We can defend ourselves by staying within our homes. Uh, before I take any questions or before we finish, I just also want to thank, uh, yesterday I thanked Rosie Tours and Pacific Destinations at the question time. I forgot to thank one of the businesses who added us also in the contact tracing in the West. I'd like to give uh, an overdue vote of thanks to tour managers for their support. I've also been through CBD. I've been through our CBD in uh, Suva. And I have uh, been able to see many businesses embracing our COVID safe protocols. I saw a sign in the door of Harrison's that read, no mask, no entry. Every sign on the door of every business in Fiji should say the same. If they don't, if the virus continues to spread, the simple fact is that most of these businesses will have to shut down for a very, very long time. Livelihoods will be lost, economic activity will plummet, and we will be in a difficult place. We are all in the same team here. We all want to become COVID contained again. So please do your part, embrace your role as businesses, as ordinary citizens, and let's make Fiji safe again. On a last note, more vaccines are here. Please register online, especially if you're in the West. Vinaka, thank you.